You're listening to the smartest guys in marketing, the best show on the planet for client businesses to learn about traffic, funnels, sales, conversions, and marketing coolness. Chris and Taylor are the founders of Traffic and Funnels, a digital marketing consultancy helping you get paid clients from cold traffic daily. Now, here are your hosts, Chris and Taylor. Boys and girls, what is up? It is Taylor and Chris, your favorite guys in marketing. Boom. What's up, dude? what up, what up, what up? Um, I'm just I'm just excited to be here. I'm excited for the opportunity to talk into this microphone and yeah. podcast with you today, my friend. So funny story last night, me and my wife of, uh, you know, five years, we were, we're getting along great. And all of a sudden I go into my drawer to pick out the clothes that I'm going to wear for the next day because high performers don't pick out the clothes they wear the day of. They pick out the clothes the morning before because I don't have time to make that decision when I wake up in the morning. I got to like do other stuff to change people's lives. Yeah. So I open the drawer and it's like haunting horror music. Like there's nothing, nothing's in the drawer. All my clothes are dirty. And I say, babe, I know that you are a wonderful feminine goddess warrior. And you have, you have your feminine energy and you're doing your thing. And I love that about you. But we need a maid <laughs> or something because I, I got to have clothes. And she's like, nah, nah. you know, she's been working and stuff and she's busy. My wife is amazing. She's the best woman on the planet. Hold on. What, I'm did, gonna, she, I'm, what this did she is, say again? This is, I'm going to tie a knot in this. We're going to loop this together. She's like, make, clean sure, your it's not, clothes. make sure it's not a noose so, around your neck. So I say, you know what? It's fine. We have a multi seven figure business, several businesses. And you know what? I have like three shirts and one pair of jeans. That's literally what I have. So I go on lululemon.com and I go on nike.com and I drop $700 in new clothes. And I'm like, babe, daddy's gives some new t-shirts. That way, if we don't wash one, I've still got another four or five in the tank. And she, uh, she was, you know, mildly disappointed, but she was also proud of me at the same time because I never buy clothes. And I just wanted to get that off my chest. And I, have broken through and I'm able to buy my own clothes now. And it's a big accomplishment for me. I'm proud of myself. I'm glad that you're able to buy your own yoga pants now. Those Lululemon <laughs> ABC pants are like $150 a piece. And I'm like, you know what? Baller's going to ball. Let's go. I can buy at least one of these pair a month. So rich. <laughs> okay. Oh, Anyways. what are we even talking about? We're talking it's- about Chris and Taylor's biggest reason for success. The reason that I'm Lululemon's whenever you want. Well, yeah, we're just talking about how people are like, Taylor, Chris, how do you buy Lululemon pants like that? How do you drive a Tesla? How do you drive a Denali? And we're going to give you the secret, the main reason that Taylor's able to buy Lululemon pants on a, on a Tuesday night, 10 30 o'clock and not even look at the bank account first. There's a reason why not even think twice about it. It's bigger than Facebook ads. You know, people, people market today that, you know, Paid advertising is like the secret, secret sauce, which is an actual tactic strategy you can use. It's bigger than the ability to sell. We've talked about all these things before on the podcast. Yeah. So this is super important. Here it is. We protect fiercely, ruthlessly, violently, vehemently, Mm -hmm. vehemently. We protect our ability to show up daily now before you hit pause and and curse you know scream cursities if that's a word <laughs> at the heavens people are like i thought this was about marketing you know listen just calm down for a second bro chacho this is about marketing because at the end of the day no skill set no facebook algorithm no sales no tactic, ability no, no tactic Nothing's going to protect you against the lack of discipline to show up every single day. Mm. And what we find is that we'll have clients come in and they'll experience results. They'll get some torque. They'll get some, some fire under them, some wind in their sails and they'll do it for a month and then they'll just fall off the face of the planet because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter how skilled you are. If you, if you've got friends in your life that are, keeping you from showing up with passion. If you've got 
you know, things that are going on issues, you know, the thing about me and Chris is like, there's not something that is, you know, hedging us from being able to show up. That's there for very long. We remove it. If it's a person, we deal with it. If it's an issue, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So nothing gets in the way. And obviously you have to know what it is for you showing up daily. Uh, for us, it's mapping out what we have to do in our business every single day, week, month, quarter to get to where we want to go. And sometimes, honestly, it just sucks. Sometimes yeah. we have to do things that we do not like. A lot of times. <laughs> most of the time, honestly. I mean, I'm just trying to sell you guys on it. Most of the time, it's like, dude, today, yesterday, I'm like, yesterday man, I, don't, I don't really want to do this today. I'd rather sit at Chick-fil-A all day and they have really good ice cream. <laughs> Chicken nuggets. But it's like, no, no, no. You know, Chick-fil-A is going to impede my ability <laughs> to get things done. And it's about doing things that are difficult so that you can, in, who was it that said, um, do hard things, have an easy life, do easy things, have a hard life. I don't know. Have you heard that before though? Yeah. That's basically what this is. Yeah. It's, about. it's like, if you want to be a copywriter, you have to go to Starbucks every morning at 5 a.m. and write copy. That's what I did. That's what you did, bro. Yep. People were like, now is that, is that just a story that you tell for marketing purposes? I'm like, what kind of idiot walks up to Bill Gates and asks him like, now is the price you paid to achieve your success all of a, all a lie? Yeah. Like, you know, you're going to get blocked from me. Don't ask me that question. No, it's insulting. It's yeah. Real. Nobody, nobody knew who you were. You didn't have people coming up to you at Starbucks or at the gym stalking nope. you. I go, there's Taylor. He's writing copies, copying Albert sales letters again. Now I do. People are like, damn, those Lulu lemon <laughs> pants are fire. I'm like, hey, bro. Everybody looks copy. so good, dude. Yeah, nobody knows. It, it's a, sometimes, has, has anybody ever told you, Chris, like when they come to your new house or something, they're like, oh, it must be nice. Oh, yeah. Oh, man, pet peeve of the century for me. You walk up to Michael Jordan and you're like, must be nice to be so good at basketball. Must be nice to have been born six foot three and this dude, yeah, grow up for a second. Like that's so messed up. You know, we paid the price. We still pay the price. Yeah, and this is you know this is something we deal with a lot because we have there's a lot of people out there who want success but they're just not willing to do the things for long term to get success. And if you think mm -hmm. that success comes overnight, or if you think that overnight being in a week, in a month, in two months, in three months you're naive, you're ignorant. And it's amazing how many people come in, like they see what we've done, we've, they've seen how we've been able to transform businesses. Um, but at the end of the day, when they get to the point of decision of waking up at 6 a.m., putting in the work, writing the post, putting themselves out there, you know, opening themselves up to criticism day in, day Ooh. out, they're just not willing to do it. Major, major, major. And we're going to talk about this more and more, but when people are afraid of criticism, they can't achieve anything. They can't be great. Because if you're worried about what other people think about you, guess what you can't be worried about? You can't be worried about the impact you can make on other people. You can only be worried about so many things at the same time. So that's a big one, criticism. Yeah, yeah. and it, it is a thing that it's the entrapment that can keep you from changing destinies. And I mean, it might not be a major national thing where you like change the world, but it might be just the one domino where you affect someone who makes a, a major impact, or maybe it's just a major impact on your family. And it just comes to mind. My wife and I, Missy, we went and saw Darkest Hour last week, incredible movie about um, Winston Churchill. And this dude was criticized more than anybody in his time. Never heard of him. Just, I mean, typical bro, <laughs> typical millennial. <laughs> wow <laughs> but it's crazy he was just like insane and he was criticized because you know the the leadership in england wanted him to basically negotiate with hitler they're dumb it was just like if you look back now like no like england would have been would have would have been become you know a nazi nazi territory and Dude. he just dug his heels in and said hell no we're gonna fight 
and he was like lambasted like people just they were pissed this is it bro he 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 changed the course of history this is it dude every single person who's done anything great has been criticized and yelled at here's the thing they're dumb most of your friends are dumb most of the country is dumb most of the world is dumb sorry 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 please don't email us i'm just telling you what's the truth if you're going to like get out of if you're going to wake up and you're going to get out of the bucket with all your crab friends pulling you down in the bucket you're going to have to separate like how you view yourself from what other people say about you because when you do get out of the bucket or when you get close here's the stages at first people just smile and they're like oh yeah sounds great i'm in your corner 100 percent. that's cool oh chris you want to be financially wealthy oh that's cool that's great we love you chris and then you start getting close and then your progress forces those people to look at their own lives and then they start going whoa, whoa wait wait a minute chris is getting free what's wrong with me what's wrong with my life and then they stop talking to you then it's just like kind of goes cold turkey and they have to actually acknowledge that you have taken control and done something better than them and they have to either accept that they are not doing the right thing or they have to make excuses and then the third stage is oh well they knew you once and they're proud of you again because you made it and they're telling everybody how close they are to chris evans when it's like man you haven't talked to me in like three years what are you talking about and you have to be strong enough and have the presence of mind to make it through that middle stage and protect protect your ability to show up and if that means you lose some friends tough tough Bro, I've had like my own family members in that stage. Like, Chris, what is wrong with you? Why are you doing this? Why can't you just be happy with where you are and what you have? And mind you, I was broke as a choke, struggling, stressed out. Like my life was awful. Yeah. And yet you're saying, why can't you just be happy with what you have? There is, an, there is a difference of, of uh, you know, finding positivity in your different stages of life. But if you don't have an aggressive plan to get out of that suckiness, uh, there's something wrong with you. Yeah. Charlie Munger. If you don't know who Charlie Munger is, he's like Warren Buffett's sidekick, Warren Buffett's sidekick. He said, acquire wisdom and adjust your behavior accordingly. If your new behavior gives you a little temporary unpopularity with your peer group, than to hell with them. I don't know, like, if somebody who's worth that much money and who has that much wisdom is saying stuff like that, you better pay attention to it. Now, yep. I think that there's a balance here, and you should go back to some old episodes. Like, I think this is uh, – we can find this episode and put it in the show notes where we talk about, like, the difference between, like, not everybody that you're friends with has to be rich, okay? That's silly. But yeah. the people you hang out with should be bettering you in one area or another. So there are people that Chris and I, we have friends that they don't have a lot of money, but man, they've been married for eight years and they are, their kids are healthy and their lives are healthy and they're good relationship. That's different. Like they are bettering us. But to the most, for the most part, like, you know, your finances are a reflection of typically how you live your life. And so it's a big deal. Like you want to make sure you're paying attention to the people you surround yourself with and making sure that they are enabling you to show up, not taking away from your ability to show up. Yes. This kind of got off on a tangent of friends. But it was good though. I think it was needed. Show yeah. up there with friends. Show up and get the memos. Trafficandfunnels.com slash memos. M-E-M-O-S. I'll give you the friends and family discount. It's only like seven bucks. It's only fifteen hundred dollars today. <laughs> All right. See you guys. Later.